Hello and welcome to Alternate Image Raid. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today we're going to be discussing another Faction Wars team build here. This one for the Orc Crypt. Now we're going to start off, I'll show you the team, I'll show you the run, and then at the end I will go over their stats and their masteries and whatever gear they have going on. So here we have uh, Duck the Pierce, probably pronounced incorrectly there, providing allied defense and Faction Crypts. We have Sandlash Survivor, we have Brask, we have Seer, and we have Old Hermit Yorl. Um... This is a pretty good all-rounder team. It is not amazingly fast. However, what is nice about this team is it is uh, also full auto. So once we get going here, I won't have to really mess with it. Although you can, as always, kind of take the wheel and it could save you some time. So the key to this strategy, let's uh, let's just get going. We're going to take not use the multi-battle for this one because we don't want to watch this twice. It is a little bit long as a Faction Wars goes. So, Sandlash providing a taunt is pretty nice. It's just like a slight amount of control going through. And one of the big keys here is, is Duck the Pierce. He can provide that, that AoE uh, defense down on the enemies, which is obviously clutch for getting through these waves quickly. And then our main healing comes in the form of Vrask, because his uh, passive, whenever he attacks, he just heals the whole, the whole team for 10% of his HP. Now, you'll notice how he's not level 60 right now. When I originally actually completed this stage, he wasn't even uh, 6 starred. And so you'll see his HP is not going to be as high as it could be. So his healing is also not as high as it could be. Now, we have Seer, of course, providing the bulk of the damage, especially on the waves. Once a couple of buffs gets out, whenever she rotates back through to her A3, and she does HP damage based on the number of buffs stripped off of both teams... Uh, which is pretty nice, and again, it's a way you could manual to take control and make sure kind of that she has it available for, say, right now on this wave. Meanwhile, we have Sandlash here, who actually kind of works against her slightly because she does purge some of those buffs off, but we'll see. It does not matter in this case. We get to her really quickly. Sandlash is going to provide a nice amount of support here in tankiness. If people get hit too hard, she will provide a, a defense buff to the team. Uh, and then, again, there is uh, there is Rass passive popping in to make sure he heals. Now, one thing I'll show you, of course, at the end here is Rask is in a retaliation set. So when he gets hit, he has a chance of autoing back. And that auto attack still procs the heal just the same. It is pretty consistent. It's pretty nice. The healing there, it just it's, it's great throughput. Um, and then uh, the Hermit down there, he does provide a res. So as long as he does not die, he should keep your team back up and alive. Now, the one danger of this particular squad, it does have the chance of not three-starring, only if somebody dies at the wrong time and does not get the res. But this team will be able to get the job done for you overall. And again, a slight amount of manualing, if you're worried about it, can kind of make it a 100% chance of getting your three-star early on. But for me, now past the three-star, it is auto all the way, because this game plays best on auto for the content you already have down, at least for me. Let's check out the boss's abilities real quick. So this boss has a chance to pervade, uh, place a fear buff um, on every enemy. And uh, that is not great. I actually didn't notice how the increased chance per buff on uh, that boss. So the adds being up there and the buffs that it, that it strips kind of kind of affect that. Uh, the They do steal the buffs from my team. Uh, this is, of course, bad typically. But in this case, I have Seer. So actually, when she steals the buffs, if Seer gets to go... It does give me a chance of actually doing extra damage to the boss. However, Sandlash's uh, ability trips those buffs off, or at least reduces their turn by one, which does mean, in the end, those buffs do not stay on this boss for too long. Especially the uh, unkillable damage and the reflect that Duck provides on himself. We'll see we are making quick work of this boss going through. However, it's not going to end up being as quick as it seems, because her final ability is she exchanges HP levels with a target enemy. Now, in this case, she is going to exchange HP levels with one of my team. And it takes kind of careful manip careful manipulation to stop that. Fortunately, as long as she doesn't exchange HP levels with the Hermit, uh, we're not going to die. Even if she kills somebody, we're going to keep going. Now, she stole it from Brass, which is fine. He's just going to go keep slapping the boss and heal himself right back up. Boom. It's just really nice to see. Now, you can avoid that HP swap if this 
ability here in Mirror Universe is on a one turn cooldown. When she gets in the HP range that she would use that swap, then she'll prioritize Mirror Universe instead and won't swap HP. It can result in a much faster time as you don't have to kill the boss twice. However, in this case, we do have to kill the boss twice. Uh, it, that's kind of how it works in auto. It is not amazing time-wise, but fortunately you're not doing this dozens of times per day. So having one of these go an extra few minutes isn't a problem. For right now, I'm just going to let this run. I'm going to speed it up here for the last couple of seconds so it gets through this boss. And then uh, when it gets to the end again, I will show you these the team stats, uh, their gear, their masteries, everything else that's set up on them. And we will be back after this speeds through here. That actually went much faster than this often does. You'll see here my best time is 314, and that is a result of the uh, Mirror Universe happening before the HP swap and not, and not going off. Another thing I'd like to mention, but I really should have mentioned earlier in the video because it does help that retention, but this is an all epic team. There are no legendaries on this team. And while that doesn't mean that these epics aren't, of course, amazing, Seer obviously is clutch, Duck is considered S tier, they have they have a great niche for their for their place, but it's still nice to see that this can be done without necessarily having a bunch of gold champs. As we'll see from my roster here, there isn't anybody else I'd be bringing in anyway that's legendary. Like I had to do this all epics. This this guy I don't even remember what his name is. He's, he's kind of terrible. Uh, obviously, uh, one of the starter champs here would would be fine in here, but he's just a little bit squishy for for this team, and I didn't quite want to six star him out. And then shaman is fine for the res. Uh, but since her kid is overall kind of weak, eventually I got uh, Hermit in here to do the same job. She was doing it previously, uh, but Hermit Hermit made better work of it. Now again, let me go show you the stats of these champions so you can kind of get an idea what the gearing takes to be able to do this, especially to do this full auto. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll quickly see it isn't super crazy. Seer is not tuned for this. Seer is going on several of my dungeon teams. And so she is tuned for that. However, of course, she is geared pretty well. This is a, a well-geared champion. 242% crit damage. Nice accuracy. You got to make sure all of her debuff strip works. And this is the case where the debuff strip actually matters. Her speed is only just moderate. Nothing really special there. And then I think I actually have her in a, a defense chest. This isn't because I wanted the defense. This was just a good chest that had the speed and the accuracy and in the set I needed at the time I was gearing her. But since her attack doesn't really matter a lot, although an attack chest will speed up your run a little bit because her A1 is attack based, most of her damage comes from that A3. And this is all based on enemy max HP and the debuffs, or sorry, the buffs that are stripped off. Uh, Masteries here, we do take her down into the extra crit damage. Uh, there is some argument to go into Helm's Master, but I prefer the the consistency of damage and not have to worry about whether or not it works. So we'll notice too, part of that crit damage comes from that ability. Now, uh, this guy here is is obviously not geared all the way out. We don't even have his accessories at uh, 16. I think when I originally cleared this, I didn't even have a banner on him at all. Uh, masteries, we'll see, I've started taking him through the masteries, but he has none. So as you'll see with a lot of these Faction Wars teams, they can be done with very realistic setup. Now, this the champion composition here is pretty nice, but we're not geared in anything super crazy. I don't think I showed the stats here. Okay speed, uh, wacky crit crit damage, or crit rate here. I have not tuned this character. I did make sure, though, his excess, um, accuracy was high enough that he would be able to land his debuffs because uh, this one particular decrease attack and defense is clutch. And I do have him booked out. Uh, he is just a really good champ. So he was not booked out. However, when I originally cleared this, you books are not uh, required to clear, but they will help your consistency. Sandlash is built. I was working on a, uh, a clan boss team for her. Masteries are not finished. They, they do have them all done. I just haven't put it down. I haven't kind of decided how I wanted to finish her out for that clan boss team I was working on. She is in reflex gear. And this is, again, for a specific type clan boss, so she's not geared for this faction war whatsoever. I don't swap out my gear for faction wars, I'm kind of cheap in that regard. Uh, her speed is really nice because I had to get it up uh, pretty high in order to extend buffs for that clan boss team. Her defense is doing decent, um, crit rate damage is okay. Her accuracy probably could be higher because of this uh, decreased duration here and also of her taunt, so the waves. However, 
on what she's actually geared for, she's not really doing that here. Now, Hermit, when I originally cleared this one, I think I also had him only as a, a maxed out 5-star. You'll notice again, his gear is not 16 out. His gear is mostly not enchanted, so he could be doing a lot more with the stats. I have him in decent speed. That was the main goal for him, and and that's it. Decent speed, decent HP. Uh, I geared him in, in, a, in a relatively fast, survivable set of gear, but of course, much more stats could come on this guy. No masteries again. We'll see that. I believe I have him booked. Yeah, he is booked out. Most of my epics are booked at this point. I kind of have a lot of epic books, so those go. Legendaries, on the other hand, I get a little bit more sparse. Now, speaking of books, so Brask here, not booked. Doesn't really make much difference. You could book him. He's going to get extra damage, but the main thing I want him for is his passive. Heals all allies for 10% of the champion's max HP whenever the champion inflicts a critical hit. That's all he's doing here. Masteries crit rate the only reason i had him that crit rate because i wanted to get my crit rate to 100 percent so he was always proccing that heal notice he's got decent crit rate he's got okay crit damage all of his other stats are pretty low his speed could be higher i'd actually like to get a lot more speed on this guy so he's just pumping up those heals faster and his hp is low not because the gear isn't actually pretty decent with hp but because he is only level 36 we'll notice however uh his gear is not necessarily fully 16 out this actually have a purpose it does a little bit but i think it was just the best stats at the time for him and uh we'll see we do have him in a retaliation set this set is so clutch for this guy uh to make him just do this attack more often every time he gets hit he has a 35 percent chance of counter attack which means a 35 percent chance of bringing a big heal to your team now obviously if he was max level this hp would be much higher and his heal would be a lot higher too so just getting these guys with level 16 gear and getting them out of level 60 would be huge for making this go through. So if you have to swap somebody out, just, you know, not being so cheap as I am and finishing off your champions is going to be a great way to go through. Again, we just had that for masteries. So as far as alternatives, now Vraz can be swapped out for anybody that provides a good heal, particularly anybody who provides a decent passive heal. We don't want somebody who needs to use it on a cooldown. Uh, so anybody you have for that, again, I don't have a lot of champions here in the Orcs faction to go compare. Sandlash here can be swapped out at that point for anybody who is providing some kind of tankiness. Our passive here, if her ally's HP dropped below 50%, she block damage on her and ally protect. So somebody with an ally protect is nice, something to block damage. Again, she's just being here for support. Uh, this guy dropped in mostly. He just matters for this revive. It actually fills their HP and their turn meter is pretty good. Helps them stay alive with that perfect veil when they come back. Uh, this is fine for the turn meter boost, but it isn't originally clutch. Having a reviver is nice. Again, most people have Shaman. Shaman will do the job if you need to, although you might need to actually spend a little bit more work on the gearing and, and so forth than I did. Uh, man, it's really tough to replace this guy, at least with what I know of the orcs, if you're looking at, you know, a kind of a budget team. The decrease attack is so massive for not getting killed. The decrease defense is also pretty nice for getting those waves quickly, so it's pretty good. Uh, now, Seer, Seer is going to be hard for the, the waves to replace. However, uh, anybody who's got the buff strip going on that you can get, it doesn't have to do the crazy damage, but just to make sure the enemy waves can't have some crazy buff is going to be super nice. And then uh, just a big damage. She's really my only my only full damage champion I bring to this team. So whoever you got that's going to provide great damage. Now, if we go here by faction again, I'll do it in this screen to my orcs. Uh... Now, Gallic here, if you were to gear him out, he could replace Seer on your damage. Now, he doesn't do the buff Strift, which is unfortunate, of course. Um, but he's going to uh, place extra speed on himself. He's going to do decent damage. He does also provide uh, the chance for the decreased defense, although it is um, generally the weak one unless the enemy is fully debuffed. So you're going to get the decreased defense weak weakness here, but not quite as awesome. And we'll see this guy is just... He doesn't do anything remarkable, which is why I don't use him. Not even uh, not even full pink stars up here. Uh, Bonekeeper, again, just damage. Now, if you had nothing else to use, Bonekeeper could be fine in the Seer role, but you need somebody with some AoE damage. So the starter champion, Gallic, here might be a better option if you're going AoE. And then, of course, Seer has, the, or Shaman has this res that we have going on. Uh, th that's it though. I think the team I have, of course, of what I am using is my best and, and really only option. My my roster here is, is extremely weak for orcs. I only have that one legendary and he's worse than most epics. So this is what I use. Um, if you have any alternatives that, that make sense to you, of course, go with that fruits. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm honestly gonna go with Vlad Rask. He's so clutch. He's such a awesome looking champion. That passive is amazing. So of course this has been alternate image raid. It's a raid Shadow Legends video. We went over the orcs faction wars, uh, crypts here. And uh, if you like this video, definitely like and subscribe. If you have any comments you'd like to say, I really like those comments are the best. Of course, likes and subs and all that and the views are excellent for the engagement. But comments are really cool to see like what is hitting, what are you enjoying. If you do sub, like why did you sub? If you dislike, why did you dislike? It's great to see that. It's great to get that feedback. And of course, if you dislike this video, then smash that dislike button because it's still engagements for the channel. And as always, have a great day.